Third evening time for weather for weather geeks here on YouTube. Thanks as always for watching everyone. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm and today went pretty much according to plan but uh, last evening was a little more eventful across parts of Ohio than we bargained for. Not in our local area northeast Ohio and western PA but in central Ohio a couple of or a few I should say tornadoes did touch the ground last evening and this was mostly north and east of Columbus. EF0, EF1, even an EF2 tornado near Frazeesburg. They completed their uh, the uh, damage survey today and concluded that this was an EF2 for a time uh, near the Frazeesburg area last evening and into parts of the overnight. We missed out on severe weather around here, but we did have a few bouts of heavier rain last night, especially in our southern viewing area. Now, right on schedule, the showers cropped up this afternoon, but as of about seven o'clock or so, these are fading quickly. It's actually a very, very nice evening because the dew points have been dropping very, very nicely over the last several hours. You know, last time, last evening at this time, we had dew points well up into the 60s, but now dew points have crashed down through the 50s, even touching 49 or 48 in some spots. Here's a look at the dew point trace at the Youngstown Warren Airport over the last 24 hours. At eight o'clock last evening, 67, that's a little more like Florida, but the uh, dew point at four o'clock this afternoon actually bottomed out at 49 degrees. It's risen a little bit ever since, but yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful summer evening out there with temperatures in the uh, 70s pretty much across the board, although we've already cooled off to 70 right on the nose in Newton Falls as of 7.09, 69 degrees in Sharon. A lot of us will end up in the lower and middle 50s tonight. Leave the windows open tonight. It'll be a beautiful, beautiful night. In the meantime, we're into June now and allergy season rolls on. Now in our part of the country, we typically see the peak of tree pollen right around Memorial Day, late May, maybe very early in June. But you'll notice the tree pollen tends to decline pretty rapidly in June, while grass pollen reaches a plateau typically during late June and early in July. Weed pollen typically peaks later in the summer and into the fall season. So we've got some nice weather coming up, but if you're an allergy sufferer, we're not quite out of the woods just yet. All right, the Scrappers home opener is on track for Friday evening, taking on Frederick at Eastwood Field, 7.05 p.m., and yeah, there could be a passing shower throughout the afternoon, maybe up through 6, maybe 7 at the latest, but that'll be the exception, not the rule. By the time first pitch happens right around 7.05, we are looking likely to be dry and comfortable, even a little on the cool side. A light jacket may be needed, especially for those later innings at Eastwood Field Friday evening. The uh, culprit behind Friday's kind of cool weather with that shower possibility, this trough of low pressure on a weather map that's usually designated by a dash black line. It's not quite a cold front, but it's going to be enough of a trigger to uh, allow that we're going to have to allow for a scattering of showers, mostly in the afternoon. Now, could parts of our northern viewing area up towards Route 87 in Trumbull County and across northern Mercer County as well, could you see a shower maybe even as early as 8 or 9 a.m. in those places? That's possible. But the lion's share of our shower activity will be towards the midday and into the afternoon, fading quickly by early evening. And then our forecast has really improved for the weekend. We've removed rain chances completely from Saturday during the daylight hours. In fact, I think we'll see a good deal of sunshine on Saturday before clouds increase later in the evening. Still pretty good chance for showers along this next week front Saturday night, but the timing on this front is actually really nice. We'll get wet overnight it looks like, but by the time the sun comes up Sunday morning, clouds will be thinning and I think we've got a good deal of sunshine coming for most of Sunday. You know, the weekends have not been great over the last several weeks for a lot of the spring season. We've had some rainy and stormy times over the weekends, but uh, this weekend is shaping up to be a winter with the exception of Saturday night. If you're finding your way to Lake Erie, uh, rip currents a uh, concern over the next few days. Uh, some pretty rough waters out there, but by Saturday that concern will be uh, fading away. And while the water temperature is still a little on the cool side off of Cleveland, Geneva on the lake, places like that, still mostly in the 60s, um, very pleasant conditions as far as the weather goes, mostly sunny skies and waves generally a foot or two on Lake Erie on Saturday. All right, six to 10 day precipitation outlook. This is what we like to see. There's gonna be a drier pattern that takes shape as we head towards mid June. A progressively hotter pattern as well, especially late next week into Father's Day weekend. Um, but going along with that, not many chances for rain next week. I think there could be you know, a sprinkle or a shower here and there, but. Based on the current modeling, I don't see a lot of severe weather chances at all next week. In fact, it looks like a largely pretty pleasant week as temperatures start to warm. Here's today's 
8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center showing the above average temperatures favored and in fact the heat starting to become a little more centered over the Great Lakes as we go into that June 14th to June 20th period. I think starting right around Father's Day and probably taking us through the rest of June. Um, we're in for some pretty hot times. We might have our first 90 degree day of the season. The reason why we do have a pretty hot summer forecast, despite the cool vibe we've had so far in June, um, largely water temperatures in the Pacific. We have a, an emerging La Nina, but that's not really the main player just yet. It's just now coming on. It's not going to reach its plateau until almost the winter time. The bigger players in the northern Pacific, this kind of couple that we have right here, all this warm water right here, and then the cooler water banked up against North America and extending south, <coughs> pardon me, south and east of Hawaii. This configuration, known as the negative phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, uh, when we have this phase of that oscillation in the summer season, a lot of times that the uh, result of that is a pretty hot summer across a lot of the lower 48 states, and I think that's what's coming this summer. This is going to be a distinctly hotter summer, I think, than last summer. Last summer was our coolest summer in several years. I don't think this summer has that same flavor, even though the first half of June not shaping up to be that particularly hot. I think the second half of June and July and August will be on balance pretty hot. Maybe getting pretty dry as well. Depends on where exactly our ridge decides to kind of anchor itself over the country. In certain spots, it may anchor itself in a, in a position where thunderstorm clusters may visit frequently. If it anchors itself a little bit in a, in a, in a somewhat different spot, those thunderstorm mis uh, clusters may largely miss us later in the summer. But pretty high confidence that it's going to be. A hot summer. Don't worry, pool owners, your time is coming. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. Let's uh, do it again with an update on the weekend forecast and much, much more. Same time, same place on Friday.